Hello, my name is Matthew Rees, and I feel equal parts confused and terrified about being Conan O'Brien's friend. Well, that's, uh, the confusion would be... Why, why, why am I even here, <laughs> to be perfectly honest? I think you thought you were on your way to a different podcast. No, no, it's not that. I usually go to most <laughs> interviews and certainly most jobs going, why am I here? They're just going to go, we meant Terry Reese. Get out, fraud. <laughs> I live my life. Gee, I mean, what a way to live. I mean, I know what most actors do. Uh-huh. Have, has that ever crossed your mind for a second? Why should I be here? Yeah, the imposter syndrome. Of course. What are you talking? I've built a career on the imposter syndrome. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I'm constantly looking about saying, how is any of this happening? Right. Um, and I think that they're talking about someone behind me. And sometimes they are, actually. <laughs> uh, that, that has happened. That's, yeah. a, that's a terrible feeling. But I, but I still I still I still navigate life looking at people like you going I bet you I bet he I bet he bloody doesn't feel it who I've, the the revelation recently was Ryan Reynolds says he has it and I was like God he has it right well if he has it we're all fine yeah well okay this is a a true story that should put you at ease I have these two colleagues that usually do the show with me Sona who's my assistant mm. and uh, Matt Gorley. But they have been found out. They have been found out. So now they've, they've been gone. removed. Good. Yeah, they're gone. But because I'm, they both have young kids, and right. I'm here in New York, mm. and they found out that you were booked, and they were ecstatic. Then they find out that only I get to talk to you because it's in New York. And they talked about it on the show and how bitter they were. <laughs> because uh, I hate to break it to you, but uh, you are a delightful... Uh, good-looking oh, fellow that oh. everyone. So this there was an insurrection oh. at my little show because they couldn't be here. Things I have never sparked. One, an insurrection in my in my own lunchtime. Yes, this it genuinely makes me feel like I have something to give. I this reminds me of years and years and years ago in another lifetime. I was walking through a section of Boston, ran into a, a gang of kids who were not too happy to see me. One of them uh, punched me really hard in the face, smashed my nose. So my mother's at work and she gets a call. And the person who calls my mother says, You're, I don't know why she phrased it this way, but it was a gang of kids. And she said, your son Conan was attacked by a mob. And my mother's first thought was, that makes sense. <laughs> She was just used to me being around the house, being a wise ass. Of course he was attacked by a mob. Oh, my God. She probably finished the sentence. One of your sons. Was it Conan? Yeah. <laughs> that um, makes sense. Oh, my God. No, we all have. We the all... Fact, but the fact that she thinks you, you could offend a mob or, or incite a mob. I could do it. It's, all, it's, almost, it's a certain testament to you in a, in a way also. I think it is. It shows... I'm, you know, yes. I'm, I'm like Braveheart. You yeah, know, I'm just yeah, a, um, yes. a great uh, yeah. a leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. You know, my life has changed so much, Sona. Has it? Yeah, let me tell you how. I can just get all this stuff delivered right to my door. I mean, if you grew up when I did in the early 1920s, oh. that was unheard of, you know? <laughs> A kid in a cap had to, hey, boy, boy, you know, and you'd have to and you'd say, yes, sir, and you'd have to say, you know, toss him a coin. Go get me that goose in the window. And he'd say, yes, sir, Mr. Scrooge. But it was it was, it was like back then. Yeah, but now it's not. So much of our world digitized and automated. Why stick to old school mailing and shipping? If you mail or ship often, let stamps.com do the hard part for you. Mm -hmm. Simply print postage and shipping labels right from your home or office. It's ready to go in minutes. No long lines or complicated setup required. It's the easiest, Sona. It's the best. Yeah, postage rates just increased again. Hello. Luckily, Stamps.com has the best discounts in the industry. Avoid the hassle and get started with Stamps.com today. <laughs> Sign up at Stamps.com slash Conan for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com slash Conan. People adore you. And when we talked, the last time we talked on the podcast, it was Zoom because it was during the alleged virus. (laughs) Um, I'd still like to see proof on that. And uh, and you were fantastic and we were cackling away. And then I will admit at one point, your lovely and beautiful wife, Carrie, walked by in the background with, I think, a load of laundry. (laughs) And I have to tell you, 
I, I my soul left my body for a minute, and I didn't listen to you at all. Yes. I watched this 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 vision of beauty yeah. walk by with some laundry, yes. and then walk by the other way. Yes, my soul off. When I see her with laundry, my soul leaves my body because I think, shit, I haven't done it. Oh God, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> You're in trouble. Yeah. Oh shit, yeah, yeah, that's that'll make me that'll make me <laughs> leap like Nuriev <laughs> when I see work work in the house that I haven't done. You know, it is still a disconnect for me. I'm. I'm a big fan of yours and of your work and whether it's the Americans or Perry Mason or any of the work you've done in film, I'm just used to this, the accent, your true accent is fantastic. Ah, Though the the, uh, the Welsh accent might be my favorite accent. Hurrah. Because I find the Irish accent to be absurd. <laughs> I mean, the real Irish accent. You know, yes. the real Irish accent, yes. when you go to Ireland and you talk to Irish people, when I was a kid, there was a commercial for a cereal called Lucky Charms. Yes, of course. And the little Lucky Charms man were like, ah, Lucky Charms. And it was all kind of like this. Yeah. And falling and falling and falling yeah. and falling. And I thought that's how Irish people talked. And then I talked to real Irish people. Like, oh, just on there. <laughs> and I say, oh, I just on there. And know. Not a word. Can't understand a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One long aggressive vowel. <laughs> When was the first time you went? To, did we, were you tracing roots the first time you went no, back? No, I went there the first time, of course, to do comedy. I went there to shoot a, a comedy piece. And the idea was that I was looking for my roots, but that all I knew was that they looked like me, meaning round face, Irish, uh, red hair. Um, they drank a lot and they were depressive. And I was <laughs> asking people, and their last name was O'Brien. Great. And of course, um, it was a really fun segment, but... I have found myself, uh, I mean, I basically know sort of where we're from. Mm. but the Which last, is where, where? We are from the south on the water, uh, Dungarvan right. in Waterford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. we know that I have a great, great, great grandfather who was a bone setter. Uh, wow. And someone else was really good at building a stone wall. <laughs> and seriously, like he knew where to put the rock. Yeah. And all of, all you those, could see, I could see the bone setter and, and the, the wall mason kind of, Discussing notes at times. Yes. Surely, surely they found a common thread there. Yes, which is when you drop the rock. Yes. Goes, now, <laughs> listen, now, I've got a fella. Well, I'm related to him. I'll send you to him now. Yeah, he'll, mm-hmm. set, you, he'll set you right. Yeah, they probably worked with each other. They did. They did. But I'm curious. Uh, you, It's got to be such a rich and important part of your life because I think of the amazing actors, storytellers, poets come from Wales. It's just got to be in your blood. There's something in your, there's something in the blood oh, of the God. Welsh people. What yeah. is it besides? Besides the obvious. Yeah. Yes. Besides 90% alcohol. Um, I, I, there's, a, there's a number of things I attribute it to. Uh, yes. I, th- I think like the other Celtic countries, we, we, we have that very deep rooted um, storytelling society. Yes. Yeah. I think, I think Wales possibly more so than Ireland and Scotland because we were, we were a far smaller in numbers and size had to had to work that much harder in to, to find a, an equal footing yep. in in this in the kind of between the two celtic giants so sometimes at times we we shout a little too loud as the kind of you know ag- aggressive young sibling of of the tribe um and i think it's ch- certainly in, in wales where there's still a very st- i don't know if i bored you with this last time there's a very strong tradition um <clears throat> in in the youth movements of wales that twice a year there are two enormous cultural festivals for children although it's slightly ironic that they make it a competition right but you get together to compete in poetry recital um you know singing any kind of cultural medium so it, it you are you are beaten over the head with it you know from a very early age and this, I, this is, I'm going to add to this, yeah. um, which is that uh, I spent 28 years with a talk show talking to a lot of actors and I learned over time, and this is just almost like I was doing a science experiment, that whether you're English, Irish, Scottish, Welsh, um, those actors come and they have stories and they're funny and there is a thing and it's not it's not true of every american actor certainly but there was a i don't know i i have a theory that it was maybe james dean or marlon brando the looking down uh, never smiling mumbling uh tradition 
meant that it's not cool to be a raconteur. Right. Does that make any sense yes, to you? Yes, abs- absolutely. So, absolutely. so, so, uh, you know, you'd have, uh, you know, great, great American actors yeah. would come on, and they would give very little, be a little monosyllabic, and every now and then, they did dare to be a little funny, but it was almost as if this is not our culture, and there was no training. Mm. And every time I talked to anybody who came up in the UK, they, I mean, you're talking about, and we were talking just before the show about just some of the amazing greats and you see them on talk shows back in the 60s yeah, and the w- 70s. Which is what I, I was raised, I was certainly raised on, you know, cu- that couple, I was going to say, you know, I think, I'm going to segue viciously because I have quite, quite, I have a mustache at the moment because my nephew came over to stay with me recently and I have such vivid memories of my uncles back in the 70s and 80s who have had terrible mustaches. Uh-huh. So I kind of wanted to have pictures of, of us together. So we'd always have these terrible pictures of me and a mustache because I always think you should have a picture, a photo of your uncle with a, du- with a dubious <laughs> mustache at some point. He's like, wait, wait a minute, you're, you're on the Americans. Couldn't you have just... <laughs> I thought, I did think about going into, <laughs> into the cigar box <laughs> and going, no, what do, we, what do we have here? Today I'm Groucho Marx. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, you, um... That coupled, so the, the, it was always the the uncle that was the slight raconteur for us back at home, who always came in with the, with a long story or the you know the tall tale, coupled with those you know the Peter O'Toole, the Richard Harris, the Richard Burtons when when they're on you know um, on those on the big talk shows who could just spellbind with with these stories of yes. of, of such enormous standing that you didn't care if they were true or not. Oh, God, true has no, no place no, in a story. No, absolutely not. We have a saying, uh, it's an Irish fact, you know, <laughs> which is, uh, and my 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 mother-in-law, who I adore, who's great, she, uh, her family, like mine, uh, is uh, Irish Catholic, and she'll sometimes, with great certainty, tell you a story. Yeah. And uh, my father-in-law will say, well, it's an Irish fact. <laughs> that's uh, I'm taking that one home. Oh, yeah. Well, Kerry and I, because Kerry and I, Kerry does that thing. So she's like, yeah, but that's not true. And I'm like, but that doesn't matter because the story was infinitely better with that fact. This is... She goes, but it's not a fact. I'm going to play this segment for my wife because my wife and my kids are always around. They saw the, the actual moment go down. Right. Then... I rearrange it yes. a bit. I make a few tweaks yes. and I'm killing with it at a party. Yes. And they'll be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's not true. You have the order wrong. Yes. And no, you didn't have a shotgun. Yeah. And I think, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a pellet gun. It broke the skin. Yeah. It shot bubbles. Yeah. It shot soap bubbles. Yeah. Um, but I, I saw, I think, footage. I don't remember where he was, but I saw Richard Burton telling a story. And, you know, you think about now there's just so much, so many interviews everywhere, mm. and they're just the the world is. Everybody's constantly just interviewing each other. No one's growing food anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just egos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so um, you can get like, oh, okay, you know, this is really so much fluff. But then I I watched. I forget who it was, but they were interviewing Richard Burton, and he was talking, telling a story mm. about as as a young man doing. Uh, performing Shakespeare in London. And then he said he could hear the word had come out just before he went out that Winston Churchill's in the audience. And then he said, he starts to say his lines and he can hear this very familiar voice in the audience saying them along with him. Yes. Word for word. Word for word. And I think. And he said, I sped up. I slowed down. I couldn't lose it. I couldn't lose him. No, no, no. And, And I think to myself, now that's a talk show story. Yes, I yes. don't have one like that. No, I have no. <laughs> I tell people Winston Churchill came to a late night show a few years ago, and uh, <laughs> no one ever, for some reason, he no was with. I couldn't lose him in the monologue. Yeah, yeah. and then at the end of the story, uh, he said, um, the, "He's in his dressing room. There's a knock at the door, and and, and the door opens, and Churchill's there, and he goes, my noble Lord Hamlet, may I use your bathroom?'" <laughs> He's like, what a fitting coda. Now, now Churchill. 